Daddyhood movement is the initiative uh, birthed through a um, company for love and wisdom. So with the Daddyhood movement initiative, uh, we look to build a platform for that you know, to, be, to be a support to one another. Um, because women talk all the time. Mm-hmm. They talk and it's very therapeutic to them. Um, mm-hmm. However, dads, we tend to be reserved and, you know, talk about surface stuff. Um, I believe that there's a difference between being a father and a dad. While we have Father's Day, um, it's really not about the father, it's about the dad. Mm-hmm. Dads, dads put the time in. Dads had a connection with dad, had a relationship with the children. And so, um, you know, we want to help fathers. I know you a dad, I respect you as um, as a man, as a husband, and as a dad. I see you at work, and I respect that. Yeah, that's why I asked you. And um, would you like, can you introduce yourself to everybody? <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Keith Freeman uh, Jr. Born and raised in uh, Philadelphia. Not only a dad, but you're a husband. And you have a lovely daughter. What does daddyhood mean to you? It's very complicated, but it, it certainly is a level of responsibility that one must um, know that they're getting into. And one must know that it's a level of that responsibility must be on your shoulders at all times. And regardless if you are tired, regardless if you are sick, you, you know, there's still a level that hangs above you or is holding on to you as a father. Um, now, I don't want to make it seem like it's all doom and gloom because um, fatherhood is more or less the, the wisdom that you acquired from our, um, prior uh, prior events, whether you, they were good or bad, prior um, mistakes, things that you yourself have won through that you now are going to pass down to either your son or daughter. So fatherhood is, is leading by an example. Um, you are the protector. You are the provider. You're the, the caretaker for not only just your children, but your wife, your your family. Um, and when I mean family, as including everything that is in your dwelling that has breath, uh, including to, you know, your pets, you know, as I'm looking at my dog walking at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those, those are things that's people don't necessarily take care of. I'm seeing him eating something right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's it's all good. Fatherhood, you know, it's it's like having the eyes on the back of your head. Like we're talking right now, I'm looking at him like, what is he eating? And I hope that, that whatever the kids left is safe. <laughs> so that's that's yeah. fatherhood. It's at a, yeah. at a moment's notice, man. It's like mm-hmm. like full time yeah. coaching, you know, except the game <laughs> don't go, you know, the game don't go uh, to the fourth quarter and just ends. It's a non-continuous overtime session. <laughs> that, that, that's real. And, you know, it's funny because everything you're talking about, I'm like thinking of responsibility, responsibility, responsibility. And um, as a dad, you know, you are, you're right. You are res- you're responsible for this being, this household, you know, um, as a husband, you know, your wife, you know, you're, you're responsible. Um, mm-hmm. You're right. You're protective. Um, so it, it's almost like you're a superhero to uh, to this, you know, to the to your wife, to your to your daughter, you know, you almost like pretty much can't do wrong, in a sense. No, uh, well, we do. I mean, we do. I mean, you, I mean, if there's room for error, but I mean, it's, it's... meaning I'm it talking is... about from the perspective of of your child. Right, 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 right. Children, okay. you know, it's like you, you know, almost like you can't do wrong. But yeah, so that I mean, that's that. I mean, that that is you are correct on that one. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's it's work. Um, now does it all work? You know, I mean, of course you have your your moments, your, your, your fun moments, your, your playful moments, your your times of um, you know your, your good times that you have. You know, you, you can celebrate achievements. You know, when they get good grades, you can celebrate achievements when they pick up an instrument or they learn a new skill um, at school or that they are able to you know, acquire new knowledge. They tell me about some things that they learn. Um, whether they have you know picked up a sport and then you see them they're progressing in it. Um, we're not just looking at, you know, the, the vehicle. We're looking at the, the mechanics of it. You know, did they learn that new skill? How did they learn that new skill? And the things are going loud. So it's amazing to see that how, um, you know, just looking at personally how, you know, your child can pick up an instrument and something say, I'm going to try it. And the next thing you know, they're playing, you know, after consistent practice. You know, yeah, maybe times where they didn't want to, to play or maybe times they didn't necessarily want to practice. But the, the, 
you know, the power at uh, the power through consistency of their practice. You can see the fruits of their labor come out uh, of the instrument because they're playing very well. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. You, you know, you just see the maturation process Absolutely. And, and what they're doing and the work that, that you're putting in, mm -hmm. you know, especially um, when you when your child is accomplishing something that you never accomplished or they're doing something better than than you did as a child. Right. Mm -hmm. it's part of it is your DNA, you know, and you know you're, you know you're putting uh, this being in the, in the world and hoping that this being be better than you. Yep. You know, uh, I don't think we want our children to be just like us. We want we want them to take the next step. Absolutely, you know, you stand on our backs, or so to speak, and then climb and go climb higher and go further. I didn't know you was a junior. Does that uh, did that put any like extra? pressure on you as a junior <laughs> like, um no no i mean not not any added pressure of you know me being a junior um only time he came out you know kind of like that was not necessarily with my um not with my dad but you know with other you know with other people with his surrounding family members or his friends so, you know you're gonna have a son you know you're gonna name him keith you know that you know that kind of thing you know weighed um upon me um not so much but he's like man like what if i don't have a son, you know, then what? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so that, that's the only thing. But my father, no, my father didn't uh, put any pressure on me to, you know, because I'm a junior that there, need, there was only stipulations or criteria that he was looking for uh, for me being a junior. Now, how, how did, uh, you know, growing up with your uh, with your dad, uh, I'm assuming that you're growing up, you grew up with your dad. Yeah. Um, how, how did that impact you being a dad? Um, Man, uh, greatly because of the things that, that he allowed me to do, but then there's things and times that he said no. Um, <laughs> I remember, um, man, man tell my age, a couple of things. I can remember this one time I wanted a, um, a pager. You know, people don't know what a pager is, I man, it's like a beeper. It's like before a phone. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have, you know, walking computers in our pockets. Um, I desired one because, you know, it looked cool. You know, it was on the block and mm -hmm. yeah. right in the neighborhood yeah. was have a pager. It was. Yeah. For those who don't know what a pager is, it's actually a device where somebody actually would call you from the home phone and they would put in the telephone number and then it would beep from wherever you are. Then you would go look at that pager, see the phone number, and then go to either a pay phone or if you were at somebody's house, go to that phone, dial the number and say, hey, did someone page me? That's what I wanted. That was a phone communication. That was our, that, that was our IG back then. That was our Facebook. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> that was it. You're right. That would be the response to someone. Yeah. Age. <laughs> so I remember wanting to have one and because of the negative um, background or negative connotation that was attached to it, um, right. I said no. And, you know, I'm drug dealers. Thought, right. Doctors yeah, and drug yeah. dealers, right? <laughs> That's that what was it was. They, you know, yeah. everybody thought, you know, automatically, like, you, you know, you're a drug dealer. So, um, that's what was, you know, played out because, you know, here it is that, you know, the young African-American male with a, with a pager and he's young, you know, why, you know, why would I need to have a need for a pager? So, you know, I got upset, but not to the point where I was, you know, disrespectful. And then, and until later years, um, after I got, got one in college again, because we didn't have cell phones that had all that technology. We just, you know, <laughs> I got one in college. I was like, all right, that was it. And it that was it. it just deep and that was it yeah and the the allure of it had you know diminished greatly because you know <laughs> there's no need for him like you beat me you know that was it yeah you know, right <laughs> and, and as we saw we grew up we knew mainly it was for you know physicians and those who are you know in that in that um first responders type situation that that was needed but we just wanted it because it looked cool and and my dad mm -hmm. no but all I have to say is this. The point I was trying to make is that um, fatherhood, you have to make some tough decisions. Even though you may not think it's a big deal, because you're like, there's bigger things in the world to worry about other than this this, this device. I'm trying to teach you bigger principles of uh, ethical, moral, um, things that the world may view you as because of, let's I mean, be honest, you know, because I'm an African-American male and I have a pager, um, that, that might be heightened a little bit more to those uh, back then, you know, to the authorities that maybe I fit a description that is something that is undesirable. With that, you as a father have to see beyond what is in front of you and look past and say, okay, would this particular situation um, be a situation where it is harmful or helpful to my child? And if so, how do I direct them? 
where do I, you know, where I direct them, how I direct them, and then more importantly, how I'm saying it uh, is the important because kids will hold on to your words that you said to them. Um, important, you you said, you know, you got to make that tough decision, mm -hmm. you know, because you can, you know, because of the wisdom that uh, that you bring, you can see, you know, what's good, what's not, what's especially specifically for your child because every child is different, mm -hmm. right? And um, and some may may can handle um, certain responsibilities than others. And as you know, you know, you said it's almost like being the coach. A coach want to put their player in the right position to be successful. Absolutely. So, so that's interesting. But you know, um, you know, when you having a daughter and she looking in your eyes, and yeah, <laughs> it, 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 I mean, that don't make it easy. <laughs> yeah, you know, what? Um, it even comes down to the things that you know that you you necessarily aren't you know not necessarily you make decisions where necessarily it's not going to hurt someone per se. But when you look at the same things, it's going to benefit um, your family in the long run. You know, there, you know, there was a time where, you know, um, I had got um, my license for, you know, my motorcycle, you know, my motorcycle license. You know, I was, you know, I was all equipped. You know, I had a bunch of guys that were um, riding and they're like, yo, man, you should get your license. And it came down to a point where um, a fraternity brother and I uh, took the courses. You know, we took a safety course at the same time. Went up, you know, there was two, I think I had two or three sessions, but it was two sessions where, um, it was like the book work of knowing the, you know, the turns and signals and, you know, mm -hmm. the normal policy and procedure operating a bike on paper. But the second session immediately um, was like jump on a bike. And <laughs> you had to learn right there. So it went from classroom to ride on a bike. And then you go back to the classroom and then you go back on the bike. So it was like, you know, somewhere like 10, 20 hours combined. But um, needless to say, you know, I did all that, acquired the license, ready to go, looking for, you know, a motorcycle. And then I had a daughter. Um, when she got, you know, pretty much around the time of, of speaking very clearly, she said, I want you on the bike, you know, and it's too dangerous. And you start reading about things and, you know, um, it kind of makes you turn, you know, and make a decision that you really wanted at the time to um, not necessarily something um, you're going to pursue. Yeah, tough decisions. And um, like, you know, it takes to what you, you know, what you were saying earlier, what's more important, prioritizing the responsibility of your child or yep. your family, you yep. know, you got to choose that one thing, you know, um, and, you know, you going to college, you know, going to college, we, 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 we know how that is, you know, you have mm -hmm. friends who you, you know, you did everything with, um, and your life changed, <laughs> your life changed when you got the responsibility. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and some understand some, some don't, but, you know, you have that, uh, that pull, that force that's pulling you back to who you used to be, um, you know, that's trying to get you to relive the past. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's bad, um, mm -hmm. all those experiences are bad, but um, because of your responsibilities as um, as a as a parent, mm -hmm. some things you can't do anymore. Now, um, you know, like I was saying, you know, with daddy, with the daddyhood movement. Uh, uh, we're trying to help fathers come into the daddyhood zone and also support dads who, um, who being a dad is, I don't know about you. I haven't found that. Um, I haven't found that, 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 uh, that book that just going to just tell me everything what to do <laughs> and, and avoid me having, uh, prevent me from having mistakes about you, but I haven't found that yet. You mean like a fatherhood so, book? No, nah, <laughs> not anyone. Yeah trial and error <laughs> right tell me about it 